Hello, my name is Tim Meany. I'm a Keysight Application Engineer, and welcome to this video on automating your Keysight instruments using LabVIEW. In this first episode, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the prerequisites, including LabVIEW and Visa, be it uh, National Instruments or uh, Keysight, uh, IO Library Suite and Keysight Visa. We'll also look at uh, connectivity uh, using the NI Measurement and Automation Utility or the Keysight Connection Expert. And then finally, we'll finish up by opening up LabVIEW and uh, doing a quick overview of the LabVIEW environment. Looking at our prerequisites, uh, you should have LabVIEW installed already. If you do not or you need a demo version, there's one available at the link here. I've also included a link here to uh, both NI Visa and Keysight Visa, which is part of the IO Library Suite. In most installations, you'll use uh, NI Visa, although uh, it is possible uh, to use the Keysight IO Library Suite instead. Now let's turn to connectivity. We start by launching NI Max or the Measurement and Automation Explorer. When this window comes up, it'll refresh. And we want to expand our Devices and Interfaces folder, which will show us where our connected instruments are. Here we have a USB uh, connected DMM, a 34461A. You'll see other instruments listed here as well, whatever you have connected. We can open a Visa test panel, and we can use this to test communication. Here we have a simple star ID and question mark command. And we're going to do a query. We send the command out. We get a response, and we've verified communication in both directions. Back on the main screen, we can see our Visa uh, address, and we'll use that uh, once we start programming in LabVIEW. You can also use this utility to test a number of commands. Now let's launch the Keysight IO Library Suites Connection Expert. Now this is optional if you're using the IO Library Suite instead of NI Visa. Here you see the same instrument. We have our Visa address here. And we can also send commands to the instrument from here. We have the same command pre-populated. If we go ahead and do a send and read, we verify communication, just as we did before. Check for errors. And there's our Visa address once again. Now let's take a closer look at the LabVIEW environment itself. When we first launch LabVIEW, you'll get this launch or start screen. And here we can access uh, existing files and projects. Uh, we can also uh, go to the Tools menu, select Instrumentation, and find Instrument Drivers. And this is something you'll commonly do. Here from this window, we can scan for instruments that we have connected. You can initiate that scan by clicking on this button here or by expanding the folder up top. You can then choose the instrument that you want to find a driver for and go out and search the available drivers. Uh, once you've selected one and installed it, you'll be ready to start uh, using that driver inside of LabVIEW. So if we go back to the launch screen, we can uh, go in here and select File, and we'll just do a new VI. Your program, by default, will come up with two items here, a front panel, which will be our user interface, and also a block diagram. And in the block diagram is where we'll uh, actually write the code that becomes our uh, LabVIEW program. If you're new to working in the LabVIEW environment, then I recommend at this point you take advantage of some of the existing tutorials out there. Uh, here's the NI website that has a number of tutorials uh, on a wide range of topics centered around working in uh, the LabVIEW software environment. If you're already familiar with working in LabVIEW, then I recommend moving on to our next video where we'll use the Visa library to communicate to our instruments. Thanks for watching.